Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Brian with DD214 Transport. Please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications. Come on in the house. Let's have a cup of coffee. Put your listening ears on. Let's have a chat. All right, so today I want to talk about why exactly are you watching this channel and what you need to do for 2022 to make things happen. I've come to the conclusion that people watch this channel and other channels like it, whether it's about hot shot trucking or other job opportunities or franchises or whatever it may be, because there's something in them, there's something in you that knows there's more out there for them. There not necessarily unhappy where they are, they're just not satisfied where they are. So I wanted to take a minute and go through a few steps you can take to make things happen. One of the first things you have to do is decide to make a change. To know that you are better than your last minute. To know that you are better than your last mistake. To reach for something more. It's all in your mind. And I figured out through my thousand years of living here that if you think you can, you absolutely can. But if you think you can't, you can't. Either way, you're right. But it's your mindset that puts you on the path. So over the next little bit, we're going to talk about some thought processes, some steps that you can take to make your situation better, to improve. Okay, so the first decision you have to make is decide to make a change. You have to decide that I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to change my current circumstances. Because it's all within you. You can make the change. And once you decide to make this change, you have to realize that it's going to be difficult. And it's going to be difficult because you're coming out of your comfort zone. You know, it's easy to do your job, a job that barely pays you enough to keep you there, and go home and know that your bills are paid and you're done. But somewhere in your head, you're saying that, hey, man, I need more than this. There's something more there for me. And that is something that's born in your heart. And if it's there, you can cultivate it. You can make it happen. And remember, nothing ever grows without a little dirt on it. So take your experiences and grow. One thing that I've learned is that you never, ever want to say, I can't something. I can't afford it. I can't do it. I can't. There's something in our brains that when you say, I can't, it shuts down every possibility that there could be for you doing it okay take that out of your vocabulary i can't i can't means you won't instead replace it with how can i so if you say i can't afford that then you're done you can't afford it your mind shuts down it stops thinking about it you're it's over 
you say, how can I afford that? Well, then that opens up all the possibilities, doesn't it? How can I afford that? How can I? So that's one area that everybody has to change. Because as soon as you go to I can't, your brain shuts off all possibilities. Now you want to set your goals. You want to set your goals and don't make them a week out. You got a year plan here. Set a year plan. You got to set your goals. You got to plan your work and work your plan. Plan your work and work your plan. Okay? If I want to be, for example, if I want to own a franchise in two years, what's your question? How can I afford that? If you want to be a hotshot driver and own your own company, how can I make this happen? And you start, and you start researching. That's why you're here, guys. You want to change. I know you want to change because I don't waste any time watching videos on trying to learn things if it's not something you really want. The next thing you want to do is change your mindset. Change your mindset to, hey, I'm a winner. And I can do whatever I put my mind to doing. You must know that. And you got to remember, you beat three billion other possibilities out just being here today watching this video. Three billion. You have survived 100% of every bad situation you've ever had or you wouldn't be watching this video. So you got to know that within your head and you got to know that within your heart. Being thankful for what you have. You don't have to be satisfied, but you need to be thankful for what you have. And I've said this before, I don't know you, but I know there's 50 things today that you can be thankful for, that you can be thankful for. You woke up this morning, be thankful. You got any measure of health, be thankful. You see what I mean? You got a roof over your head, be thankful. You got electricity or you wouldn't be watching this video, be thankful. So you got to be thankful for what you have and strive for more and push for more. You don't have to necessarily be satisfied because you're not. You're hungry. You're ready to roll. You're ready to do something more. You wouldn't be here, like I've said. Being thankful for what you have is much different than being satisfied with where you're at. Work ethic. Work ethic is huge. If you're getting in business to be rich or to make money, you're getting in for the wrong reason. And you cannot have a million dollar dream on a minimum wage work ethic. Guys, it's a lot of work. It's not a job. You've heard me say this before. It's a business and you're starting a business. Me personally, when I first started, I was billing, I was dispatch, I was everything. The garbage man, the toilet cleaner, it was, it was everything. And that's what you gotta be willing to do. There's a saying that I love, and, and I love it, and I want you to put it in your head, and that is being successful is hard, really hard. Being broke is hard, so you got to pick your heart.
pick your horn. Now, even in the Bible, James 2, 14, 26, faith without work is dead. Think about it. You can pray for this to happen all you want, and you should. But if you're praying for going into the living rooms, eating Cheetos and all day, nothing's going to happen. So you have to realize that this is going to be a lot of work. And go get them. You can do it. I know you can do it. Hell, I did it. I tell everybody, if I can do it, you can do it. But you have to understand what's before you. And you have to have the ability to understand the problem, overcome the problem, and adapt your situation. Once you can do that, there's nothing that can stop you. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is your due diligence. All right, there's a lot to this, more than just sitting in a truck and driving. I made a list that the first few things you need to get done is you need to research your state law on what is considered a commercial motor vehicle. You need then to go to the FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, and look at their website. It is a good website, guys. You need to look at their regulations. Then you need to learn about load placement load securement, tarping, oh my God, I'd never tarped anything in my life. Never, ever, ever. And when I went out on my first load, my first load was a tarp job and I thought it was gonna kill me. Hate it, hated it all year this year, this past year. And then you need to research driving a CMV and what it takes, your hours of service, what you can do and what you can't do. Um, on the very first day, if you want to quit, it's because you haven't done enough research. All right? You remember that. You remember. I recently had a gentleman quit. If, well, it's the second time he quit. He's got $150,000 invested in a truck and a trailer. He goes out. Um, he grew a brain and told a person that was loading his truck, how he wanted it loaded, squatted his truck down to the frame and couldn't move it. Well, the people who loaded it had already left for the weekend and he was stuck. So he quit after that. Well, then he went to, he went ahead and decided he'd finish out the load and, uh, and he did. And then he slept in the back of his truck. The guy's my age. And he called, just raising hell. He said, man, I can't do this job. I can't sleep in this truck. And my first thing was, who the hell told you to sit sleep in the truck? If you watched anything of my videos, you won't see that come out of my mouth. I said, so what you did was you grew a brain, decided you was going to reinvent the wheel. You're talking to somebody that's my age, and now you want to go sleep in a truck. How'd it work out for you? Okay, so do your due diligence. Understand what's what. If you want to sleep in a truck, sleep in a truck. I'm too old for that foolishness. Some things you want to realize is that this job won't get easier. It's going to be from day one all the way through, it'll be the same amount of work. And as I found in tarping, tarping didn't get easier. I got better at it. I got more proficient at it. I understood what needed to happen. You know, it, <laughs> I tore up. I don't even know how many torps I tore up before I got to the point I could actually do it decently. But I did. I tore up some torps and I hated it and cussed and, 
and the whole nine yards all the way through it, but I kept trudging through it and I got better and it got better and it seemed to get easier, but it wasn't. It was just me getting more proficient. So understand that. Understand that you're not going to come out of medical school one day and go straight to brain surgery. It's not going to happen. So understand that you're going to have a learning curve, got to pay your dues, and it will or it doesn't get easier, you will get more proficient at it. Now, you get a cup of act right in you, and you've made the decision to move forward, the first decision, or the first thing you have to remember is that everyone starts from a different position. Even though the destination's the same, where you're starting from is going to be different than everybody else. And you can't compare what you're doing to somebody else because you'll constantly beat yourself up if you do that. So the key here is to take your time, do it right, and move forward. Do one thing at a time, get it right, move forward. Now, You've made a decision to change your life and to get out of your comfort zone. So the first thing you're going to expect is things to get hard. It's going to get hard. Filling out this paperwork is not easy. But you also have to remember that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. You have to take the first step. So the first step <clears throat> would be evaluate your current situation. Decide what truck and trailer setup you want to use. Then get a VIN number for that truck or a similar truck and trailer. Then reach out to an insurance company that does commercial insurance and uh, get a quote. Just get a starter quote, an estimate as to what it would cost you to do this. That'll at least give you, hey, I can afford to do this. This insurance is reasonable enough for me to run with it. Okay? So that's the first thing I would do. Depending on where you're starting from, again, everybody's different. Okay? This is sort of a, a timing thing where you want to try to get everything to come in together at the same time. So, for example, if you do not have a truck, then you don't want to file for your MC today. You want to wait until such time as that truck, that trailer, whatever you have to wait on is going to be there. Because once you file for your MC and they accept it, then what happens is a clock starts going down. And you only have so much time to have your insurance in place and posted and your BOP 3. I think it's 90 days, but if you don't have it there and in place, they will void that and you will have to start all over again. So this is a timing issue, guys. Once you get a hard date, when the furthest thing out, such as maybe you had to order a truck or maybe you had to order a trailer, at that point, at that point, once you know when those things are supposed to be in your possession, I wouldn't file for my MC until I have a hard date when those things are going to be here because your clock is ticking at that point. Now, things you can prepare for, and again, this is a timing thing. It's, it's I got to get all this stuff here so I can go out. I'll give you an example of mistiming on my part was I ordered my tarps too late and 
when I went on my first run, I didn't have any tarps. So, okay. I'm sure you can see what I mean. Okay, so, for example, you got a date that your truck's in, you got your trucks coming, you got your trailer coming. Well, what do you want to do next? Well, at the right time, you want to go ahead and file for your MC. And I'll put a link below as to where you can file for that. When you file for your MC, you have to remember that there's no rushing it. It's going to take 21 to 28, most people just say 30 days, from the date you file it to the date that you have the paper in hand. You cannot run unless you have your authority in your hand. So expect 30 days from the date you file it to the date you have your paperwork where you could run. So that's another part of that timing thing. So you got your truck, your trailer, MC, all coming together. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of things that you can't do until your MC is activated, but there's a lot of things that you can do, and you need to do as much as you can while you're waiting. Once you get to the point that you filed for your MC, then you will have an MC number, and you'll be able to, and they'll give you a DOT number, and you'll be able to go ahead and um, get the magnets for your truck. Everybody, I recommend everybody start out with magnets first and then move into placing them on your truck because the magnets will be there before you're ever able to get this other stuff placed on. Uh, go ahead and get your electronic logging device brought in. Um, get it signed up with a drug consortium, uh, get signed up with a drug clearinghouse, go ahead and, uh, and get a urinalysis test. Uh, you know, do as much as you can so that, you know, as things start coming together, there's less and less and less to do when you get to the base. The other thing you can start doing is getting your equipment list and start making sure all of that is in around the same time that your MC goes active, that your truck and trailer are going to be there. And like I said, this is a juggling game and you just got to sort of do what you can, but don't get frustrated with it because there's going to be hurdles. There's going to be things that take longer than possibly they should. Uh, for example, Texas, if the stickers, they're six, eight weeks. So, and you can't even ask for an if the sticker until you have an MC number. So, it's like, ha, ah, you want to string yourself up. So, while you're waiting, while you're waiting, you want to look at the states that you're going to be running. If you're doing low 48, then you might consider getting your um, your state stickers, your state permits. There's about five or six states that you got to have permits, um, and most of them are out west. So you're looking at Oregon, California, Nevada, so forth. Those kind of things are things where you need to study up on and figure it out, what you're going to need. Now the next thing you want to do is start getting your finances, finances straightened up in that you're going to need, or most will need, unless you can wait, you know, months to get paid, 
you're going to need a factoring company. You'll probably need a fuel cord, uh, an I-pass or an easy pass, something for toll roads. Um, I don't use a pre-pass, but some people like them. So if you like that, you could do that. You're going to need some kind of accounting software. Guys, I'm telling you now, accounting is critical. And you're going to need it because taxes are going to come. And you're going to need to pay these taxes. You will need to either find a dispatch company or figure on dispatching yourself and all of you know how I feel about that I don't think you're gonna make any money trying to dispatch yourself so so yeah now I'm gonna leave a link below to some resources that will help you out um, just you know, use the resources, try them out. If they work for you, great. If they don't, change them. But, uh, you know, I wish all of you the best of luck. And if you need anything, please reach out. Thanks. It's Brian with DD214. All you veterans, thank you. All you first responders, thank you. You guys can do whatever you set your mind to. I know it because I believe in you. And I know what you've been through, absolutely. I know exactly what you've been through. And there are times when it's tough, but you just keep pushing through because you'll get to the other side and it'll be better. All right, guys, I'm out. We'll talk to you next time. This is Brian with DD214 Transport. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. Thanks, everybody. Go check out the Facebook page. See you.